Rassi Rasmus has announced the first Springbok squad to take on Wales on the 22nd of June. With the Bulls winning their URC quarterfinal, they aren't eligible to play for the Springbok, so none of the Bulls players have been included, but the Stormers ended up losing to the Glasgow Warriors, which means the Stormers are eligible to play against Wales. Rassi has named 11 uncapped players in the squad. With a couple of surprises in this video, I'm going to be giving you my opinion. As always, drop your opinions and thoughts down in the comments. Leave this video a like and absolutely more that subscribe button. Let's get into it. So as you can see, we're not in our normal setup. That's because we're on the road in Pretoria at the moment. We went to the Bulls quarterfinal yesterday. So if you haven't checked that video out, it's on the channel. I'll make sure you go and check it out. Now, let's dive into the 35-man Springbok squad. We're gonna start with the forwards. There's a couple of surprise packages in here, but it is boasted by the Japan players that are allowed to play. Obviously, the UK-based, island-based players are not eligible to play because this test match falls outside of the international break. So the first call-up, we're gonna to go through the Sharks. First is Pepsi Butelezi. And as you know, we've been asking for Pepsi Butelezi to be included in the Springbok squad on this channel for the past couple of months. We've made a couple of videos about it, but he's had a fantastic season for the uh, for the Sharks. They ended up winning the Challenge Cup. Yes, the, their URC form wasn't great, but Pepsi Butelezi has had a great season and I cannot wait to see him in a Springbok top. Obviously, this, this uh, squad will get cut down by quite a few, so a lot of these players will miss out on the Wales test. I hope Pepsi is not one of those. Then one of the most obvious players from the Sharks, who's probably the first player you put on a Springbok lineup, that's Irvin Etzebeth. I mean, he doesn't need much introduction, and I feel like he just keeps getting better and better the more he plays rugby and the older he gets. He's been phenomenal for the Sharks this season, massive ball carrier. He's probably gonna captain the squad as well because Sia Khaleesi isn't eligible to play because he's playing his rugby over in France. So I would be, I would be surprised if anyone else captains this side if not Irvin Etzebeth, probably then Bongi Bonambe, who's also been included in this uh, squad from the Sharks. Whether he's going to play ahead of Malcolm Marks, who's also been included in the squad, we still have to see, but we have two world-class hookers that played in the Rugby World Cup for the Springboks um, in 2023 that ended up winning the World Cup. Also, Bongi maybe had a little bit of a quiet season for the Sharks, but we know how good he is, and we know how good he is for the Springboks. The next obvious pick from the Sharks is obviously Vincent Koch. Johnny Bravo, Mr. Incredible. He's going to be tearing it up, and if you just look at the the Sharks players, we have a Springbok front row there coming up because Oxen has also made it. So we have the starting front row from the Rugby World Cup with all the experience. Obviously, I do think Rassi Rasmus is going to experiment with a couple of changes. There are 11 uncapped players in the squad at the moment. So he's definitely going to birth some new blood into the Springbok side. But it's good to see that Vincent Koch and Ox were included in the 35-man squad. And then a little bit of a surprise pick from Rassi Rasmus from the Sharks. It's Mchunu, who has been coming off the bench a couple of times for the Sharks. He has started a lot of games, but he is quite a young, talented prop. And I do think he's probably going to get a go against this Wales side. Maybe he comes off the bench, adds a little bit of that X factor to that bomb squad so those are all the Sharks players I think there's a couple in there that we honestly knew were going to be in there but then Pepsi Butelezi great pick from Rossi Rasmus and then obviously Mchunu who is an up-and-comer and will probably play against Wales we then move over into the Stormers now obviously the Stormers lost to the Glasgow Warriors we weren't sure if the Stormers were going to be included in this book squad to take on Wales because we weren't sure if they were going to make it to the semi-finals well now we know unfortunately they're out of the URC but as a Springbok fan that's fantastic for us. The first person on the list there is Joseph Dweber, who has been in and around the Bork uh, camp for quite a while now, but it seemed like he fell off a little bit in the World Cup, and just before the World Cup, Rassi Rasmus didn't really choose him, so it's good to see that he's getting another shot. Whether he makes it, because you've got Bongi, you've got Malcolm Marks, whether Joseph Dweber gets a go against Wales is still yet to be seen. Another very, very interesting pick from Rassi Rasmus, fully deserved Ben Jason Dixon from the Stormers, having one of the best seasons, probably a loose forward he's having in um, the South African conference this year. He can play lock, he can play flank, he can play eighth man, so he just adds that little bit of utility for the bomb squad on the bench as well. Neatling for Shear from the Stormers has also been included. Big, big front rower. He's also been a little bit of a surprise package this year, really made a name for himself at the Stormers, and I'm extremely, extremely happy for him that he's made it. Then we go over to the old the old side, France Malherba, an absolute diesel run tractor of a front 
front rower. Whether he's going to play against Wales, I'm not too sure. I think they probably will test out Nietling for sure. Um, but Francois Hober will definitely play against the Ireland against Ireland in that test series. So I'm sure Rusty Rasmus just wants him around to sort of coach these younger players up in preparation for Wales. Then someone from the Stormers who's captained them quite well this season, Salmon Murat, who's been in the conversation for a couple of seasons now and is finally sort of getting his shot. And he, he probably will play against Wales. Obviously, you've got Ivan Etzebeth, you've got uh, Franco Mostert who's coming up. But Salmon Murat's great leader. I wouldn't be surprised if he, if he plays well for the Springboks. He might be the future leader for the Springboks in the next couple of years going into that next World Cup. Then Evan Ruiz gets the call up again to the Springbok camp. It's going to be interesting to see who Rassi plays against Wales. Obviously, he's got Ivan Ruiz, he's got Pepsi Butelezi, who can play eight. There's Quaker Smith in the mix. You've got Peter Steff, the toy. So there's a lot of loose forward options, but we know Rassi Rasmus loves that. He likes playing the 6 2 7 1 split on the bench. And those utility loose forwards are going to give him that variance that he's looking for. Then Andre Hugo Fenter also had a very, very good season for the Stormers. I don't think many people would have pegged him to sort of be playing for the Springboks this year, but his performance for the Stormers is what's earned him this spot in the Bork training squad for Wales. We then move over into the international players. Now, as I said in the beginning of the video, Japan-based players are eligible to play because their season ended a couple of weeks ago. The first name, probably the first or second name you put on a Springbok team list, Peter Steff the Toy. We saw how good he was against the All Blacks in the World Cup. I mean, he's just, he's just a freak of nature. And if he's not included, then something's definitely, definitely wrong. Next up, we've got Malcolm Marks, who obviously had that long-term injury from the World Cup. And I do think Rassi Rasmus is going to back him against Wales. He's probably going to start against Wales just so that he can get some game time ahead of those Irish tests and ahead of the rugby championship. But good to see Malcolm Marks back in the fray of things. Franco Mostert, also from Japan, has been included. Utility back, flank, lock. He probably will end up playing lock just because there haven't been that many locks included in this 35-man squad. But Franco Mostert can play lock or lose forward. He's a quality player, brings that experience, and he's definitely going to sort of bring more of a dynamic edge to that Springbok squad. Next up, Quaker Smith, who was absolutely phenomenal in the Rugby World Cup. He can play flank, he can play eight, he can play bloody wing. That oak is phenomenal, and I do think he's going to be a key cog, especially in those island tests. And then the final person on the list who will not be playing against Wales and will probably not be playing against Ireland because he received a six-match ban was Jasper Visser. But obviously, Rassi Rasmus wants him in the fray. He still sees him as his number one eighth man. And going into the Rugby Championship, I do think Jasper Visser will sort of lead the line in that eighth man position. Then we move over into the backs. Now the backs are quite interesting because there's a lot of youngsters, there's a lot of uncapped players, and there's a lot of fly-offs that Rassi Rasmus has included in this 35-man squad. So starting off with the Lions, Jordan Hendricks uh, had to get called up. Now the one player that hasn't been included in the squad is Sinelo Nohamba. Now I do think he had a little bit of an injury, but I still would have expected to see him in the squad. A lot of people have been saying he can play 9 for the Springboks, he can play 10 for the Springboks, he brings that utility. Obviously Rassi Rasmus doesn't agree at this point in time. But Jordan Hendricks, a great shot, youngster, and we saw that he can also play 12. He's been playing 12 for the Lions in a couple of games and also brings that utility to the back line. The next one is Kieran Horn, the Lions a fullback. We've been calling for him. Kieran Horn is a phenomenal, phenomenal fullback, and he's, he's also quite young, so he has a lot of growth growing to do into that 2027 World Cup. The, and then the third line is Morning van Bach, a nice nippy little scrum off, and I'm sure he's going to get some game time against Wales. And then a little bit of a surprise pick from Rassi Rasmus from the Lions, Edwell van Amava plays wing for the Lions. He's been scoring plenty of tries. And wing is one of the most difficult places to sort of make it in at, um, at a springbok level because you've got the likes of Chesden, Colby, Mpimpi, Kirkley, Aronsa. There's just so many people who can play wing for the springbok. So to see him include Edwell van Amava, Rassi Rasmus must see something very, very key about him to include him in this uh, squad. Next over, we move into the Sharks. Apalele Fassi has been included into the box squad yet again. He has played a couple of games for the box, but then he sort of went out of favor with Rassi Rasmus and the coaching staff for quite a while. But he's had a great season for the Sharks, and I'm super, super happy for him that he's made it into this team. Next up, surprise, surprise package. Ethan Hooker. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if many of you don't know who Ethan Hooker is. He plays for the Sharks. He just won the Challenge Cup with the Sharks. He started against uh, the Bulls in the game two weeks ago because um, Lukanya Um was injured. He's almost had this rocket ship ride to the top with the Sharks. I mean, he was playing in the under-20 Curry Cup 
last year, I think, or the season before that. Now he's just won the Challenge Cup with the Sharks, and now he's been included in the Springbok squad. He's a big, big number 13. He's very versatile, so I'm actually glad to see him there, and I do think he's going to be the sort of the future outside center that, that takes that role over from uh, Jesse Creel, Lukanya. Um, I do think Kane and Moody can also still play 13, but I think the Bulls play him at wing, and I think Rassi Rasmus would prefer him at wing. Next from the Sharks, Makazolo Mpimpi needs no introduction, and I'm glad that he is still playing for the Springboks. He had a little bit of a quiet season for the Sharks, but obviously has that experience. Then the star boy of the Sharks, the guy who turned their season around, Sia Masuku, has finally got his call up in a Bork jersey. Now, obviously, there's quite a few fly-offs in this team. Once I go further down the list, you're going to hear. But Sia Masuku deserves his shots, and I'm glad Rassi Rasmus has included him here. Next up from the Sharks is Grant Williams. Can play wing. Very, very good scrum off. I mean, we saw how good he's kicking. Tactical kicking was um, in that Challenge Cup uh, final for the Sharks. Combining him and Sia Masuku, they control that game perfectly. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Rassi C. Rasmus play Sia Masuku and Grant Williams as a combination against Wales to sort of test that out. We then move over into the Stormers and there's only been two Stormers backs that have been included. Obviously Damien Willemser is injured but Marnie de Bock has been included so that's another number 10 that could potentially play against Wales and then you've got Sasha Feinberg Ngumazulu who is sort of pegged to be the next great thing. He's a Damien Willemser-esque type of player. He can play 10, he can play 12, he can play 15. So it's going to be interesting to see who Rassi Rasmus picks for this Wales test because you've got Jordan Hendricks uh, who can play fly off. You've got Sia Masuku who can play fly off. You've got Sasha Feinberg and Gumazulu who can play fly off. Marnie Lebok, Andre Pollard has also been included in this squad. Now, he's not eligible to play for Wales, but I think he's been put there to sort of teach these younger guys the ropes, the systems, and sort of lend them a helping hand in preparation for this test match. So Marnie Lebok and Sasha have been included from the Stormers. We then move over into the international players. Obviously, Damien Delende has to be included. One of the best players in a Springbok top. So happy to see him there. Faf de Klack, another scrum off that can play against Wales. He has all the experience in the world. But I do think Rassi Rasmus is going to slowly start phasing Faf de Klack out of the Springbok side leading up to the 2027 World Cup. Because, I mean, there's just so much class in that Springbok um, 9 shirt. Kurbis Reynach isn't eligible to play. Uh, Grant Williams, you got uh, Morane van den Berg, you got Sanelo Nohamba, you got Grant Williams. There's just so many scrum offs. And South Africa's blessed with, with great, great scrum. So the next one is Andre Esterhazen, who also, I'm not sure if he's eligible because he plays for Harlequins. I'm not sure if Harlequins has released him or not, but I don't think he's going to play in this test match. He's probably just there to lend a helping hand to the likes of Sasha Mgumazulu, who could potentially play 12, Jordan Hendrickson, uh, who could potentially play 12. Then, obviously, you have to include Cheslin Colby from Japan, probably one of the best players um, in the Springbok lineup. JC Creel has also been included. That's probably with the uh, because Lukanya Am um, is injured. Kane Moody is injured, who's also played 13 for the Springboks. So Jesse Creel will probably start at 13 in that game. And then the final player that has been included in the squad is Andre Pollard, like I said, probably just for that little that leadership in the camp and the build-up to that Wales test. So that is the 35-man training squad for this Wales test. It's going to be very interesting to see what combinations Rassi Rasmus goes with. Let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions down in the comments. If you haven't, make sure you hit that like button. And as always, make sure you more that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Peace.